Good evening, ladies. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Regularly scheduled. Anybody else here? Anybody else here? Try again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Please call to order at 632, March 13th, 2023. First order of business is approval of the minutes of March 6th. By motion, we approve the minutes of March 6th. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes as presented. In discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, next up is under new business. Yes, we have uh, the presentation by the Insurance Advisory Committee with their recommendation. Shoot. Um, before I do that, let's share the screen. Sorry. Yeah. So everybody can see. Did we vote on the minutes? Is that I'm sorry? Did we vote on the minutes? No. All those in favor of acceptance of minutes have presented signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, she almost caught me, didn't you? Three zero, Jeff. I'm gonna stand. This feels ridiculous, but I'm gonna stand. Nice to see you guys. Thank you for coming out. Um first half. Oh I'm boy, this is gonna be a long meeting. I can sense no. it. I'm getting over a, uh, an upper respiratory thing, so I'm going to just speak as quickly as I can before my, uh, my voice gives out. Um, thank you for listening to me um, uh, present to you. Um, we are the uh, Insurance Advisory Committee, um, and I made a presentation um, of the work that we've done. I just wanted to introduce our members, um, myself from the Police Department, uh, Catherine Utmost from the uh, Town Library, Cindy and Heather from Town Hall, and uh, Donna and Leah from the elementary school, and of course George from the highway department. Um, and I just wanted to get out some uh, some analytical stuff, some slides. Um, I'm just gonna read them. Um, so basically our mission when we um, came together was to research and discuss potential adjustments to our current providers' plans for possible cost-saving solutions to review the Town of Sunderland's existing health insurance provider and all current plans, to discuss the rates and benefits offered by alternative healthcare providers, and to work as a team to ultimately make a reasonable and well-informed recommendation to the Sunderland Select Board. And since this time, our first committee meeting was held on October um, in 2022. Since then, we've had monthly in-person uh, committee meetings. We've met with the uh, current Maya representative We've developed and administered a health insurance survey, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And we have um, collected comparison data from neighboring towns as well as analyzed all of the data that we've collected. Um, part of the big process for this was um, putting out a survey that was to all uh, Sunderland town employees um, from all departments. And this was sent out through um, notification from their department heads of which they completed a survey and got results back to us. Go ahead. Was that so Ben, was that inclusive of people on and not on the insurance plan? Did you did you kind of survey try Correct. to get everybody? Correct. Excellent. Thank you. Correct. Um and again we'll we'll have time to talk yep. and blow through this. Um so of that I see that thing. I don't know what that is. Oh, can I hit X there? Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. So um, the consensus was um, pretty clear when we got this data back, which is that um, more employees who qualify um, do not take the insurance due to having more affordable options. And this is kind of broken down um, into this chart right here, but the, the takeaway is, is pretty clear is that um, they have more affordable options. Um, uh -oh. Okay. Um, the second big question that we asked um, 
was basically what among all of the things regarding the health insurance was most important to them. And not surprisingly, cost was um, something that was most important to the employees above all else, aside from um, anything else, was just the total cost of that. And if you look at these, this is the breakdown of how those questions were answered and the responses that we got. Sorry, I'm going to here. So we did have um, some employee comments. That was a big part of this, is we requested comments. Um, as you can anticipate, we got um, a lot of comments, so we tried to strip out um, uh, just a few of them, just to try to make it as quick as we can. I'm just going to read them quickly to you. Um, the town's options. The town's options offer excellent care, but at a high price. Um, I have insurance for my husband's employer because the coverage is better, and it covers 80% of the cost. Another one is the biggest thing for me is the monthly cost going down. Uh, I've been looking for other means of employment because I basically work to pay my insurance. Um, I do not want my insurance to change. While well, I love to pay less amount each month, I do not want to lose the services that I currently have. And that kind of takes us to the overall takeaway from this was that um, people really like the insurance that the town of Sutherland offers them. Um, I can speak for myself that uh, the care is great, um, but they want affordability to go with the coverage that they have. And that led us to essentially uh, retain the current health insurance and plan benefits that we have right now. So the outcome of that was to not make any adjustments to um, our plan and keep what we have. And the recommendation is a 65% town contribution for fiscal year 24, which would represent a $40,000 increase to the town and to recommend a 55% retiree town contribution for fiscal year 24, which represents approximately a $4,000 increase in cost to the town. Um, again, we did establish um, a long-term goal, which was 75% town contribution by fiscal year 28, uh, by increasing town contribution by 2.5% per year for the next four years. And, um, we did uh, get some late data that Jeff is going to introduce. Um, we were trying to establish, I wrote it down, the, uh, the affordable care requirement, which at this point, based on the numbers that came in again late that we didn't make any adjustments to, which would look more um, closer to 70% from a town contribution standpoint to reach that. And that's pretty much that presentation, and now I just like to answer any questions or have a discussion. Anything? Yeah, just to clarify for anybody who might not be familiar, the Affordable Care Act requires that all employers offer an affordable health care plan for their employees. What's affordable is defined by the federal government, um, and it's basically a about 10% of the lowest paid employee's uh, salary. So, um, yeah, we would, <coughs> right now, 65% of even our lowest paid plan would be above that threshold. Thank you. 70% would get the bottom plan to, to to meet the requirements, or is? Yes. Oh, okay. You only have to offer one plan that meets the requirements. Jessica. Hi, Jessica Corwin, Sunderland School Committee. Just wanted to make a quick statement. Um, but first, I wanted to point out the uh, meeting agenda for tonight said the meeting was at 7. I think there are people who are planning to join at 7. Um, I believe a corrected agenda was posted last week. Okay, I don't think it got emailed out. Anyway, my statement, um, Sunderland Elementary School is a bright, vibrant center of childhood learning and development that currently serves 180 students in 15 classrooms. Over the last two years, we've experienced significant staff turnover. 20 staff members departed and were replaced in 2021 to 22, and 18 so far this school year. This two-year trend significantly exceeds the attrition at other Union 38 schools. 
While the reasons for those departures were varied and sometimes complex, each one of them impacted the school with the loss of institutional knowledge and relationships. Numerous staff members have spoken directly to the school committee about the financial difficulties that they experience related to the high health insurance costs that they bear. Many school employees cannot afford to pay 40% of their premiums on school salary, especially instructional assistants, custodians, and cafeteria workers who are essential to supporting our students. SES staff are acutely aware that their colleagues in three other elementary buildings earn exactly the same wages but take home more because our three peer towns contribute a higher percentage of health insurance premiums. Some of the staff who recently left SES have done so for positions in other Union 38 school buildings where they take home more pay exclusively because of the difference in health insurance costs. Sunderland Elementary School would be best served by attracting and retaining the best staff with a competitive benefit package. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. <clears throat> nice presentation, but thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Heather, yeah. Any anything to add? I I I just want to thank you. We said last year that we thought that a program that the insurance plan that you offered that worked with Maya was a good plan. There was other there's some that didn't agree, um, but we we uh, our our first plan was is to our first major concern is to try to understand that. It's, it's easy to base things on when you're at the high end of the scale on something, but you're trying to get people that are on the lower end of the scale, it's very important to try to keep them in mind. So co-pays and such were very important, and I think that was one of the things that, that we have always, that we've tried to do in the past, is try to keep our co-pays at an affordable rate. So I think i like to thank you and, and Jeff and, and before Jeff Sherry um, to try to maintain that. So I, I think we, you, you did a nice job, or you've done a good job. Thanks. I think the plan is, is great. I think they're just, um, the percentage, you know, as far as what talking about. Yeah, the percentage, you always, you always gonna, and I'd, I'd like everybody in here that would like to see their employer pay more, or not to pay more, raise their hand. Probably no one would raise their hand. Right. So, it, it's just trying to it's just trying to find that 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 afford. Ben started off by saying affordability, right? Mm -hmm. It's trying to make that affordable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. okay, excellent. Jeffrey, I just want to point out that um, there was sort of a. $40,000 figure in the presentation, and that's based on current enrollment in the health plan. Obviously, if the employer increases the contribution, it becomes more attractive. So we may, it, point being that the cost may be exceed 40,000, so we just have to, whatever the, the ultimate recommendation is, I'll have to have a conversation with Maya about how many additional people we think may join and just budget for it, so. So, so one thing, Jeff, is the of the uh, affordable care health care act okay so is it is it you basically we have to go to 70 percent on that lower pay to about 70 percent what's that about 70 percent if if we are not changing benefits yes so how could you change benefits? Increase co-pays, create a deductible. No. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, and again. Without changing the plan, yes, you have to go to 70% to avoid. And, but I will note that next year, if insurance costs go up 5% and people only get paid 3% more, we're going to have to revisit it again next year because, again, insurance costs are going to be more than 10% of the employee's share, uh, take-home salary, or not take-home salary. Oh, is that full-time employee, or is that like? Eligible, so benefits eligible okay. employee. So it's going to be somebody working 10 hours a week, it's not going to throw that whole number off. Okay, that makes sense. Mm, that's an interesting thing. So,
so so can so can we take can we take our our present the least expensive plan and go to 70% reimbursement on that and 60% on the other or what we're doing now keep the the yeah other two this 60% and then go yeah could yep. do that yep okay i i mean to to in in my opinion knowing who that we'd be it i would think if you want at least do that do we yeah that, that's I, the floor for sure what's that that's the floor for sure like you yeah, should at, do anything less than that correct. absolutely Absolutely. Do, do we know the breakdown of, of the people who are on the plan currently, who are choosing the low option, who are choosing the other options? I think they're, Heather, they're... Yeah, I've got seven. I've got seven that are on the lowest plan right now. And then everyone else is on the yeah. higher ones. Okay. And how many on the others? Um, Just yeah, estimates. Roughly, um, Yeah, there's 65 total. Right. Okay. So the, the majority of people are not on that lowest plan. Correct. I think right. the majority are on the, the middle, which is the, the HMO. HMO. Okay. Yeah. So 65 total. What's the total um, employees for Sunderland? 65 total employees. You and all six, but how many are on the insurance, one of the insurance plans? 65 people. Yes. Yeah. He's asking plan. how many total Sunderland employees. How many eligible yeah. employees? How many are eligible for insurance? So how many are the how many are not taking the plan right now? There was a breakdown that said it was the up percentage. It was it was roughly fifty fifty. It was like but that was survey forty three. That was survey respondents. Yeah, that's oh, that's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Wow, I don't have that number. Because there's people that utilize their their spouses' yeah. plans and stuff like that. So it's do you have any idea how many that is right now? Roughly twenty, thirty. I, I don't know exactly how many how many people that is. Because I mean it's yeah. sixty. 60 40 right now. 60 40 right now? Yeah. Okay. So split. Yeah. So 40 or not. 40. No, that's not a hard. I know that. Yeah, yeah. We still um, know how many are not on the plan who could switch over. I apologize. I yeah. did not get that but, part of the number for you. No, that's right. But roughly, how many employees do we have in Central? About. Mm -hmm. Four. Four. Less than 100, right? No. No, it's not. We're over 100. And only 65 are on a plan, though? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can get that number for you. That means, yeah. yeah. Sorry, just 65 out of maybe 110, 120. So, yeah. Yeah. So a little more than half are yeah. on a plan. It's like 130. So half. Yeah. So. What's your thoughts, Crystal? It's a tough one. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to look at these numbers. And I mean, I think it, we have to obviously go up on the lowest plan to be compliant. We have no choice, really. That one is a I, pretty I mean, stripped down plan. I, I, you know, I think it's interesting that. It doesn't matter what the benefits of a plan are, but it's it's like so you could have higher copays and the federal government wouldn't care. <laughs> well, go ahead, Ben. Say it. Does that make can, sense? It's not about whether they can use the coverage, but whether they have the coverage. I, 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 doesn't that doesn't that? It does not. How does that speak of affordability, Ben? What is that? I don't know, sir. I know. What's that's the a difference? tough one, isn't it, Ben? What's the Heather, that's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, very you, you, it'd be, it, you could, you could, you could offer less of a plan, but in their eyes, less expensive. But the people would have to pay more out of pocket, as I'm understanding it, and that would be okay. Makes zero sense. Perfect. Well, uh, well, it makes perfect sense. Well, it makes perfect, yeah. Because the insurance companies lobby. Government. Right. Yeah. 
So now everybody has to have insurance. Just out of curiosity, between the, the lowest plan and the plan that most people want to eat, the H1, uh, what's the out of pocket difference between those two? Is it close or is it like a huge step up from the, the lowest to the middle one? Um, I mean, there are differences in terms of cost breakdowns per plans. Are you just asking what? All the benefits are the same, though. All the co pays are the same, and neither of them has a deductible. Mm -hmm. The difference is how many providers you can access. Okay. Between the lowest and the highest plans, yeah. And the lowest what? in the middle plan, not the PPO. Two Joe's definitely. Okay. And, and, and the. <coughs> what's the. Do we, do we know what the total cost is for the lowest one versus the middle one? Or a percentage? Some kind of compare? I'm trying to figure out is it, is it that we're talking about a plan that's a. Th I'm pulling numbers out of there. $1,000 a year versus $1,200 a year, or 1000 versus 2000 a year? Or who? Total cost or cost to the, the the employee. At this point, if it's all sixty percent, then it's the same number. I mean, it's what two two hundred and fifty dollars per pay period for the yeah. It's plan, um, so. month wise. It's about a hundred dollars difference. Hundred dollars difference. Okay. So so the bottom going, one is a hundred. It's less expensive, as in a hundred dollars. And it's going to become more like a hundred and forty dollars difference when if it goes from sixty to seventy and the other one doesn't change. Yeah. I mean, I haven't run the numbers, but that sounds right. Okay. So, so Heather, how much different is our plan versus the plan in Deerfield when you look at copays? Did you look at that also, Ben? We didn't look at every single town's plans in terms of what everybody is using for co-pays. Yeah. We have a breakdown of um, contribution rates and stuff like that, or yeah. tax rates and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, everybody has a little bit different you know, plans and stuff like that. Um, okay. But there's this, as your thing coming up, because there's this here that does show you. Sunderland's highlighted in the yellow. Yeah. So, you know. Which one was that one that that's the one called Sunderland Benefits Comparison Doc. It doesn't show you necessarily which towns, but it shows you where those benefits fall. The Excel sheet, right? The PDF. I think this is what you want to look at. So this is. Wow, right. we don't usually don't talk about this. Tom, this is the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust, which is what Deerfield has. <coughs> yeah. Uh, and this is our current HMO over here. So you can, their copay, ours are 1025. Oh, no, that's drugs. Uh, five bucks more for primary, uh, 20 bucks more for specialists. 20 bucks more for x-ray, uh, off x-rays. Um, we pay nothing for imaging, nothing for outpatient, uh, nothing for pharmacy deductibles. Um, so it looks like overall this plan, our current HMO plan is better than the, the digital field plan. Offers, uh, Richer benefits, right? From a plan, from a plan standpoint, it's, from benefits, it's richer than what they are, yeah, okay. are offered. Yes. And what's your field offering percentage-wise? Do we have that number? It's on that. So your field's at sixty-five. Oh, okay. So there is something. Where was? The copays are hard to look at though, because they're so variable. From person to person, and one of the reasons copays exist is to minimize the <coughs> frequent visits. And a lot of insurance plans will give you either your group or individual um, uh, each year an evaluation. If you have a, a healthy group, your insurance sometimes can be held or or less of a raise, right? If you, yep. And so you know the copays. If if I have a higher copay. I might not go see my physician because I'm not going to pay the twenty dollars. And but if I have a free, I might go more often. So I think it's hard to to look at copays unless you have data on how many 
visits that all the employees have taken. And I think you really, really you need to look at the flat rate of what the town is contributing, what the employees are contributing, because it, it varies. Yeah, I, I Joe, good point. I ju just, just so, and, and again, just for no other reason, because Jeff, we got this information. Emergency room. If, if you don't use the insurance, the if you get seventy or seventy-five percent, it would be probably less expensive. Other plans would be less expensive. But for instance, our emergency room visit. We all may use an emergency room, right? Yeah, one more time. So fifty-eight percent of groups. This is Sunderland's current plan compared to other Maya community plans. Fifty-eight percent of groups have a one hundred dollar. ER copay, 15% have a $50 ER copay, 9% have a $150 ER copay. Sunderland, which is 7% of Maya, has a $75 copay. That's probably some of the lowest. Um, inpatient, and this is, I mean, this, what you just said, Joe, just is inpatient admission copay. So if you have to go, 25% do not have an IP copay. That's Sunderland plan. 16% have a tier 275 $1,500 copay as part of BCBS, Blue Cross Blue Shield tiered hospital network. 13 have a $250 <coughs> IP copay. 12% have a $500 inpatient copay. The rest vary from $25 to $500 slash $1,500 copays. Our plan's not too bad. Right, so when that boils down to is Sunderland has the 25% that don't have the copay, 75% of people have an inpatient hospitalization copay. Yeah. So, right, so unfortunately that all comes with the cost right. to and have is, that zero. This is, this is, I mean, from the onset of this, right, um, it was what can we what yeah. can be tweaked, right? And one of the instruments for tweaking things was to adjust plan benefits. And that's sort of where that survey came from and feedback and meeting as a committee was that was established pretty early on that the people here love their plan here and they don't, they don't want a different plan and they didn't want any adjustments made, which made that part of it, part of the equation was pretty simple to solve, being that there is no change to that part of the equation. So. May I add something? Sure. Whoever Thanks. you are, we can't see you. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a member Hi, of the Insurance Advisory Committee, Catherine Amstar. Um, and so I just wanted to reiterate, I think um, included in your packet um, was a list of like how much changing the benefits would um, adjust the payment and looking at that report it just seemed negligible to change the benefits um, it just didn't seem like it would be worth the cost um, to you know to the town we wouldn't be saving very much money and our employees would have you know a, a lesser plan um, which they it reiterated it through the survey that they really enjoyed so that's all i wanted to say Thank you. Catherine, you back up and operational now? Yes, we are. Thank goodness we were able to open up this morning. Good job, Catherine. Excellent. <laughs> I, I, I like to thank everybody that was on this committee, too. It was a blast uh, spending time meeting and hanging out. No, I, it, it's not easy. I, I, I don't think it's an, I don't think it's an easy thing, Ben. I, in, and again, it, it's our, we, we, we try to balance everything. So, it, and I don't think there's a, a, a perfect way to do it, but uh, you know, I, I, I would, I, I know when we started out at 50% and, and we started work, which wasn't that long ago, and, and we started working up, I, I personally don't have a problem going to 65%. I do have, I do have reservations about going past 65 if we ch in without changing the program, and 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 that, and people may not want to hear that. Employees may not want to hear that, but I think that you you just 
when you if you're saying that we're we're taking home less less money than others in our paycheck and it's like okay then I guess then we should be spending the same out of our paycheck as well. So I, I personally, you know, and I'm I'm speaking for myself, I don't have a problem going to sixty five percent. Um I would support that. I would say that if if there's additional you know, if we start doing additionals then we have to start looking at matching what other communities are putting together also. And and that's and first is I would definitely go to seventy percent on on so that we fall within the, the, the confines of the Affordable Health Act on the on the on the program, the least that we pay right now that what they're seven. Right. Yeah. Um, but I would I would I would recommend going to 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 sixty five percent presently, but the next any beyond steps beyond that, we match we match our our health benefits for the other t communities that we're, we're comparing ourselves to. Just to clarify, what was the intention for us to vote on something to set in place the 2.5% each year, or was that just a suggestion for future select boards to decide in the coming years to honor that or not? For the 75%? In order to get up to the 75%. So the 75% the was a goal, right? That was a, a goal that we that we set out to achieve and obviously um you know that's something that we have to um work out and that's why that wasn't uh, a specific recommendation okay. as opposed to the 65 percent that was the recommendation although now again like we said to to reach the affordable care um, criteria and again it's not to say that this you know, committee can't rediscuss things in the future and, you know, continue to have discussions and um, talk about it. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, oh, I can't call it. Donna. Yes. Here. Hi, I'm wondering if I could have permission to speak, please. Sure. I'm wondering, um, Jeff, do you know what the penalty is per month? Nope. For not meeting the percentage. No. Nope. I did a quick online search, and it looked to me, and I may be wrong, but um, it looked to me it was about a uh, little over three hundred fifty dollars a month per employee, which is more than four thousand dollars a year per employee for not meeting that. And I think that uh, the cost of increasing our health insurance and retaining highly qualified. Um, employees is well I think it's going to be less than what that cost would be um, to you so I'm just wondering if uh, if you might look into that a bit before um, you decide to not um, not try to meet is it is it Donna, Donna? It is Donna yes um, I felt we, we were going to increase this to 70% for those that aren't we were going to increase to seventy percent to for, on the, for those seven that plan that's offered, their lowest plan that's offered. Yeah, we have for the seven people. Yeah, we have, I, we have right now there's seven on there's seven on it. Yeah, I don't, I don't. But yeah, so we were going to do that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone. I, I would be surprised if the three of us end up voting that down. Correct. Yeah. So I, I, I think if you if you move um, to meet the seventy percent for those seven people, does that kind of get you off the hook with the ACA yes. uh, penalties? Yes. 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 Okay. We hope. Okay. Yeah, our understanding is you just have to offer a plan that meets those. Whether or not people choose that plan or not is up to individuals, but we have to at least offer at least one plan whose guidelines are within the the range. Mm. But okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm not la I, I'm laughing because we could now I'm, I'm trying to understand how the federal government works which may be a, 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 a stretch but we could we could increase the cost of the co-pays or whatever it is on all the plans and make them all meet it yeah yeah so or we could offer plan well I, I'm just saying even though we even though services correct. with that very low cost correct yeah even though we go to 70% on 
the that plan right now that we're talking about um it still depends on salaries right uh, there's a lot of things that that and it still may not meet the requirements but if we <laughs> we, we could we could increase some of the co-pays or the other things in the plan that would cost less but make us a week ago to Basically, we end up make we could meet the federal guideline by making our employees pay more money for less services, and we'd be fine. And that's not our goal. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Does that make sense? It does make sense to me, and I do appreciate that very, very much because that lower plan is actually uh, providing fewer options for your employees. I think I would really like to have you consider the message it says to your employees who have been dedicated to you for so long yeah um, that's all no so i agree i greatly appreciate you entering the conversation I, I just think i just think it's cra it's just crazy i i it, anyway that's my personal opinion it's crazy but i i mean we should be stri we should be striving to offer it, but they don't they don't really care about what the plan says it's just how much how much you pay it doesn't matter what the employee pays it just matters what the business plays that doesn't make so, any sense to me I have a question this, this this may be a little bit off topic but are we looking at the wrong end of this question not necessarily about increasing the minimum we pay for the lowest plan but maybe increasing the lowest amount we pay employees in Sunderland so we don't have somebody making so little in town who's eligible for the insurance that we have to increase our lowest plan up to 70% if we increase the floor of pay for employees to catch the one, two, or four people who are at that bottom level that are bringing our numbers down up even a little bit, it would allow us to continue 65% on a plan that not a lot of people are asking for while being in compliance with the government and honestly helping out the handful of people who work for the town who need the help the most because they are by definition the lowest paid employees in town. So my understanding is the lowest paid employees are union employees. So no, we can't. <laughs> In the next contract, um, right, Heather? I think so, yeah. yeah. So I, we can't just do it without reopening the contract. Okay, that's my point. But yes, your, your overall point, absolutely. That we can be raising wages um, so to have the same effect. I would like to propose, and this is a, a, a not a this year thing, but maybe a next year or the following year thing, that we reassess this. We do 70% on the lowest plan to get us in compliance so we aren't out of compliance. And then we reassess getting our lowest paid employees with a union contract that allows them to make enough money to be able to afford that lowest plan at 65% and be in, in, the, in the realm of, of compliance. Um, and then at that point, if we are able to raise the those lowest people up to a level where they're making the money that honestly they should be, um, we could then reassess bringing that, that plan back into, or leave it at 70% as if we just choose to bring the other plans up past the 65% mark. Um, and again, this is not something for today, this is for the summer to talk about, but I think it's an important part of the conversation because really what this says to me is not, oh hey, we should raise this lowest plan, but oh wow, there's somebody in town who's making not enough money if, if we're having to up the lowest plan, which does not offer great services, just to make it affordable. Well, to you got to down. So I think we have to change the wording of that only because it's not that the lowest plan doesn't offer great services. The lowest plan just has a smaller network. It yeah. has the same copays. It has the same everything. It's just limited. Am I correct here? To where they can go. That's fair. Yes. So, right, so, and, and I was under a different impression of it, you know, I mm -hmm. thought that they actually had less services provided, but they still have those same copays, those same no deductibles, they're just limited to... From a dollar outlay perspective, absolutely, but the other side of it is also as somebody who has struggled to find providers in service Correct. plans before, yes. that can end up being, oh, well, now I'm driving to Worcester every week for this appointment that I could have had Northampton on different service, and that also can be a substantial Correct. cost. So, Correct. Yes, you know, it can be. Yeah, and, benefits, you know, benefits can come right. both the financial and right. the real world. Right, and then know. that's when you have to make that decision whether you step up to the next plan. Yep. 
you know, next time you have but open it, it, it sounds like if, if what we're saying is that, the, the, that this lower plan with a lower, lower out-of-pocket cost isn't, according to the federal government, affordable for some of our employees, again, I'm saying maybe we talk about whether those employees aren't being paid enough and they should be paid more so that they are affordable yeah. to be able to pay for health insurance. And I don't think any employee should work for Sunderland who can't afford to pay for, at the very least, our lowest insurance. Um, I would just add that it's also a factor of the hours that they work, right? Because insurance doesn't matter based on hours, but their take-home wages do. So you could also increase their hours. Yeah. Um, oh, what's, what's, what makes someone ineligible? Is there a minimum hours from that? 20. So, so yeah, so we could, we could look at them to see maybe about having there be people under 20 hours or the minimum at both 20 is 25 hours or something like that and not have people in the 20 to 25 hour range in order to there, yeah so if I could just make one more point which is even if Sunderland were to go to if Sunderland would not change benefits and go to 65 or 70 percent the amount of money in Sunderland employees paychecks is probably still going to be less than any other community because we still get better benefits. So it's gonna be more expensive. So I think that, I just wanna make that point that if the people are gonna be comparing paychecks from community to community, you're still gonna see a difference, right? Um, we, we are not moving to their plan. Um, we we're could. Just making ours more affordable. And so I think that, I just wanna be clear so that when people are looking sure. at their checks, if, if this goes forward in next year, they're looking at somebody from Deerfield and they go, Sunderland's paying 65, Deerfield's paying 65, why do they have more money? But then you're saying the people benefits. who are opting out of the insurance won't see a difference either way. Right. People who are opting into it have overwhelmingly said, we like our plan, we'd rather pay more for it than... than Could we can just best plan. represent... Right. Catherine? Right. Catherine? Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention, I, I'm pretty sure that the other towns are on the Hampshire Insurance Trust Group. Um, and we're on Maya insurance, so there isn't the option for us to just immediately switch. Um, I'm pretty sure the Hampshire Insurance Trust um, has a, a waiting list for us to be able to rejoin. So I don't, I don't think there is a way to really compare necessarily um, in terms of in terms of cost and being able to switch because it's, it's just not an option to well, switch immediately. Catherine, we we could ask Maya to put the same put the same plan plan together for us okay so but I think and again I should have said this earlier Ben thank you and for in your committee for taking the time because it's not easy but but I but what I but what I and I, I really appreciated what your presentation because I think your presentation said that you like the plan basically you like the plan the and, and I think personally, I think it exceeds Hampshire Collaborative's plan, okay, because of the benefit package. You like that plan, and 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 you because there was no recommendation to change plans. Right. The takeaway was we yeah. Like yeah. So so I th I think that's good, um, and 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 I know how I I personally think it's good when the employees get involved and understand because sometimes if what Jeff was just saying is that 65% doesn't mean, 65% in one community doesn't mean the same as 65%. And, and I think you guys understand right. that, right? Okay. That, that, that's the, and, and I think that's, that's the most important thing to me is that we understand that sometimes I always, there's a difference between equal and fair. And sometimes equal is not fair and fair is not equal. Does, is the same thing as equal. So. And I think that's what you said, a 65% in one town is not the same as 65% in another town. Right. That's not what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about maintaining the plan <coughs> with the co-pays, et cetera, that you guys presently, that our, that our employees presently have. Now, okay. this, in terms of procedure, mm -hmm. is this something that we're going to vote on and then that gets sent to the town for that town meeting to be voted on as part of the budget or is that something that we decide and that's just, that is what it is now and we move forward with that? So, so, so when we finish our budget, we will have in there and we'll have a budget presentation in the budget where we'll say that we're, if, if we decide to go from 60 to 65%, we'll say it, it's going to approximately cost 
X amount of dollars. It's it's reflected in the budget. This is a change in our, this is our change in our the budget that we're that we're bringing forward. So, um, Pete, we will vote on that at our when we vote at town meeting. They will vote yay or nay on that. Somebody could make a motion to go smaller, go go larger. Also, okay. just have to find so. So we would be part of our budget okay. that we will bring to town meeting. We 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 just. I believe your recommendation is to maintain the same plan, maintain the same plan, Correct. increase it to 65%, and and strongly consider going up over the next few years to reach 75%. Just continue the discussion. Yeah, over the next five years or so. So right? I would feel comfortable voting now on 70% in the lowest plan, 65% in the rest of the plans, with the acknowledging the recommendation and yeah. You know, the, the, dealing with that down the line. Um, do you? So it's going to be part of the overall budget. So you may not want to vote on something until you've looked at the whole budget. I mean, you don't have to vote on it. I guess is my point. You can. Yeah, we just want to accept. We, I, I think that we can give. We can express our opinions. And you can direct me to. Put that in the budget so that you can see what it looks okay. like. I, I guess I would say I would vote to direct Jeff to put that in the budget. Is 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 a, a, a good way of putting that. That was that would be how I would move. Would you like to discuss that, Crystal? No, I mean, it, like I said, I agree with Jeff until we actually have an overall budget. It's going to be. I, I'm not. I I agree. I I am. I am fine with Nathan's suggestion of recommending the 65% and the 70 on the lowest plan and leaving further increases open to discussion sure. as a recommendation. Sure. And the increase for the retiree. What's the retiree currently paying 50 now? Yeah. Okay, so 50 to 55, okay. And that's only like a four thousand increase because there's not a lot of retirees on that thing. Okay. The retirees can also get Medicare as well, can't they? So, okay. If they're well, all right. On the age, so, okay. did did you make a motion? I did not make a motion, but I can. We can call that a motion if you okay. would like. Do I have a second on the motion? I second that motion. Okay. So so at, let me see summarize. if I can summarize. At the present time, we are going to at the board, if, if it's a positive vote, recommending Jeff place into our budget a 65% town copay contribution. contribution on the upper plans, 70% on the lower plans to find ourselves and try to make ourselves compliant with the Affordable Health Care Act. How's that? And then the further percentages open and, to yeah, well, we, that's that's in the that's coming years. We we would take we, we're gonna take the yeah. insurance advisory board or committee's recommendation and that, that'll that'll move forward. So that that would because you don't disband them, right? Um, I think we could, or we could um, allow them to continue and, and only meet as needed. Yeah, that's prop. I, I I mean I I think I think that the more the more educated everyone is about what's available and understanding what's available the better, stronger, more thorough discussions that we can have. And and I, I, appre I, I appreciate the conversation that the group brought forward tonight and yours, because I, I don't think there, I, I, I think that the recommendation says that the, the board understands the importance of, of the contribution to the to employees, but also I think that the employees understand that their plan's not too bad, um, the, the, what's offered with a plan, and that we it, that it's important to try to maintain maintain those 
um, items that are in the plan. So, I, and again, I, I think that it's, and, and in, when we're all looking at, when we're all looking at similar data, of course we, we're at different, we look at it from different positions, but when the information's presented so that we can understand it, that's good. So, all right, so we have a motion made yep. and seconded. Second. Any further discussion? We're going to have to hold your peace now, Ben, once we, once we vote now. All right, so all those in favor of the motion of putting it into budget subject to change, and if there's any changes, we would notify mm -hmm. them, right? Yep. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero, Jeff. Thank you, Ben. And, and, you and so if you could just let everybody know on the insurance committee, I know it's not the most glamorous thing, but it is important, and, and sometimes under, understanding what's in the plan is an important concept yeah. also. No, I had a blast meeting with everybody. It was awesome. I, I love data. I would love to see a follow-up survey next year after the plan yeah. goes into effect to see yeah. how some of these numbers might have changed, more, more people are more interested yeah. in the plan, that kind of thing. So the Disbanding was such a sad name. So, yeah. Thank, thank you, Ben. I will yeah. say that I pitched this as a time-limited service, so if, if there are some people who thought that they would be dismissed after after this, um, we can have a conversation about replacing you too. Okay, good. All righty. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it, and we look forward to making recommendations in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Catherine. Thank you for Thank all you, you do for the town. Okay, Jeff, what do we have for uh, appointment of Delta Sand and Gravel Public Wayers? That time of the year again. It is. We have three Delta Sand and Gravel Public Wayers. T.J. Conroy Jr., Melinda Gibbons, and Bridget Hammond. And I believe Bridget is the only new one. Um, all three have completed their conflict of interest trainings and are ready to be appointed. Okay. So these are just one-year appointments? Yeah. Yep. Annual. All right. So we haven't got the one from Allstate yet, huh? <sighs> Probably not. Uh, Wendy's not. I, I thought some. I thought all states stopped doing it. Did they? I okay. thought one of the two of them stopped okay. the public way. Yeah. Alrighty. Motion. So I motion we appoint T. J. Conroy Jr., Melinda Gibbons, Bridget Hammond as public wares. Seconded. Okay, a motion made and seconded for the appointment of Delta Sand and Gravel public wares. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff Tree Zero. Yep. Um, operating budget review. Sure. So we uh, handed out the, the initial draft of the spreadsheet. Um, I think, I believe we discussed the personnel committee's recommendations last week, but if we didn't, um, it was. Uh, wage adjustments and a 3% COLA, which is included in here. Um, what else are some of the big changes? Um, so I'm just trying to look quickly. Um, you know, we had, we had requested an expanded uh, services budget. Um, and so, Oh, you know, I didn't put it on here, which was my request um, for the new position. Uh, there were additional hours for the um, police clerk, um, the deputy um, assistant chief firefighter, increased hours for the part-time firefighter, Increased expenses across the board, fuel expenses, building expenses, everything is more expensive. And, um, you know, we met with Frontier last week. We're going to sit down with uh, the elementary school tomorrow. Um, looks like remote. It, I got the message that it's a snow day, so. It is a snow day. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know. A third per, um, more students at Franklin Tech, so that that's obviously going up. Um, retirement, the, the additional two percent didn't go in this year, but retirement going up. Um, and 
we'll obviously see a, a I would say at least a forty thousand dollar increase for the insurance based on sixty five and fifty five and seventy. So Go ahead, Keith. Any copies of the draft or can you tell me where I can find it online? Um it did here. I have my copy. So, so going forward, we still don't have free cash. Correct. And and the cog didn't get back to us. The, um, last week they had submitted for free cash. They had not submitted the schedule A yet. Okay. So and they did not get back to us today. With an update. And so you're coming up with plan A or B, right? Yep. Okay. How do we, how do we, um, when you, when you look at what's available, what, what's happening in, when you look around us on, in different communities, when you look at, and again, we, we talked last week about Whiteley having an assistant treasurer collector, assistant accountant. How, how do we address that, Jeff? I, I think that that is probably a multi-year goal. I mean, I think that, or a multi-year plan. Um, my understanding, because I was not here, is that we haven't really increased staff in we haven't. a long time. Um, so I think that look around at communities and and I think it really depends on what the select board's vision is or the town's vision, the community's vision for the town and, and what you want to see as far as where we hire more people. You know, is, is it a buildings and grounds maintenance person in the highway department? Are we talking about a town planner to help, you know, bring more business or zone, for, you know. Right. So we're looking for more office staff here in the town hall, right. whether it's full-time or part-time. Yep, do we Assistant want a full-time full -time administrator? Right. Whatever, you know, yeah. So I think that, I think that there is certainly um, an appetite to improve. It's just the direction that we go in, uh, the direction that we grow. But I think that there's also something to be said, and I think that it's, it's true, you know, the, you don't have to, you don't have to have all the bells and whistles. You can run a, a lean government um, as well and just do that. So I think that it, it really depends on how we I, want to I budget. I think we but have think to, we, though, keep in mind that lean and not enough hours to accomplish, not enough people in hours to accomplish what needs to be done. They can be different. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think any of us want to see excess people just walking around with nothing to do all day. And obviously that's not where we're at, but <coughs> I really do think that there are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <coughs> we, basically have no redundancy, and I'm not gonna speak for the school because I don't know Correct. how that works, but um, you know, in the town office building, there's no redundancy. The redundancy for police, if somebody's out, is the state police. There's, you know, if people can't come in or are yeah. unable to um, take an extra shift. So, you know, and, and when that's really gonna hit is when people start retiring. Um, and if there isn't a good overlap, um, then that, that could, that's when people are gonna feel it. You're not gonna notice it now when Wendy's been doing this job for two decades, Cindy, and they can say, here's how you do it, Jeff. <laughs> you know, it's really right. helpful. But if Wendy or Cindy hit the lottery tonight and decide not to come, I so hope. do I, because hopefully one of them will share with me. Um, <laughs> But that's when, 
you know, all of a sudden we don't have. And I do think day-to-day -day operations, I think there are times that there are people that are overtaxed right now. Yep. Just trying to get their day job done. Yeah. You, you mentioned a grant writer, and I, I think that would be an absolute bane, a boon for our town, a, a, a huge boon. Because whatever you pay them, they're going to bring in at least that, or at least one would hope, <laughs> at least that much money in grants. Um, and I, I feel like there's plenty of things that we pay out of pocket in town that if we had a dedicated person to write grants for, we could get a lot of things paid out of uh, grants that would free up money for other things. Um, and that's, so that's a position that kind of pays for itself, and I think that would be a, a definite boon for the town. Again, I think it's all going to. It, it has to also manage the grants, not just write them. Yeah. Because we can have somebody come in, write all the grants we want, but if we're putting that on to Jeff yeah. to manage it. But what we would hope that if we pay, let's say, $70,000 a year to a full-time grant writer manager, and that grant writer manager writes a quarter of a million dollars worth of grants per year, we actually have money in the budget to be able to hire that assistant treasurer or something like that, or assistant town administrator or whatever. Yeah, and usually grants, you can use 10% for administrative costs too, so yeah. you know, there's 25000 to that $70,000 salary right there. Yeah, so I, I think there, there might be ways for us to add personnel that then allow us to add other personnel. So we still don't have school transportation in the budget for elementary school? Um, it was, I don't believe it was broken out in the sheet that I had. We got the overall budget, so it's included in the, in the, the elementary school line item right now. Okay. So, so I know one thing tomorrow night at the conversation with the elementary school budget is the... I would at at some right now the education budget's like seventy percent when you look at frontier tech and elementary schools seventy percent of our budget right pretty close and I don't really, I don't know if that we even include health care costs in that seventy percent so um, most of our employees. And, and again, back, bottom line, I, I, I kind of think it's interesting is that when you look at the eastern part of the state, 70% of their budgets don't go to education. They get a lot more commercial taxes and that kind of thing. Well, well they have, well, and again, my, my, you know, and, and I would say if you look at, if, just think if, if we had 50% of our budget was education versus 70, what would that mean? And, and I don't even know if some Eastern part of it is, is 50% of their budgets, right? I, I just, you know, so, so, so how do you make, so when you try to make, when you, when you try to look at, When they, they, you try to make education funded equally by giving every student or every student thirty dollars or sixty dollars, well, that's it, it may be equal, but it doesn't appear to be fair to me, in, in my opinion. And, and and I know the schools are in a hard the hard place because as long as as long as and and when you look at the elementary budget or Frontier's budget. It's not like they're adding anything different besides labor. And, and labor, labor is a driving, I, I mean, the fuel cost, I mean, we have fuel, fuel costs, but it's not they're driving their line item, right? I mean, it, it's just, it's purely labor. So I just don't, if somebody, at, if someone were to ask me, how do you make things fair? I would tell the state, well, the, our, your school budget should not be, your, your total 
your education budget shouldn't be more than 50% of your total budget. Well, and we were having a discussion last week with the high school about um, the difference between the average cost per, per, per child and what, the, what, per, what amount of that is unavoidable cost of running that building and what is the actual cost per actual child. You add another child, you're not adding another boiler, you're not adding another more heat, you're just adding more, maybe another teacher for 30 students, but you're not adding that same thing. And I think that that's something that the state needs to look at is it's not just about $30 or $60 per kid, it's about X amount of money to run a school and then X amount of money per kid on top of that because you have a large school system out in Boston and their per student cost for the facilities and everything like that is going to end up being a lot lower than ours is because they have so many more students and they're able to defray that cost across. And so if the state was going to make it fair, they'd have to kind of find a middle ground, right? Both, both, and sort of in many ways what our federal government is, is set up to do with the, with the, with the Senate and the, and the House is some, some of the representation is based on pure numbers and some of the representation is based on the fact that you exist, right? The Senate gives you two seats even if you're Rhode Island. Um, and I think that, that, that at the state level that would be a lot more of a fair way of doing things is, oh, you're a school district, great, you get $100,000 a year and then you also get $30 per student or something like that. Because for Boston, that $100,000 would be a drop in the bucket, but for us, it would be absolutely like life changing for our town budget. At least be a bucket. It'd be a bucket, yeah. It'd be a bucket, not more, it wouldn't be a, not a drop. I, I just I just look at, and again, it, for a long time, we, we, we still, and it doesn't matter, the school, when you're out in Western Mass or in the Cape, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're behind, you're, you're, you're behind the eight ball when it comes. So what, what ends up happening is that in the towns, we, we end up, we end up having these lengthy discussions between the school committees and towns and, and some people would say it's fighting. It's not really fighting. It's just trying to have a, you know, try and bring some sanity. So, so how do we search for sanity through insanity, I guess, but yeah. I, I, I just don't, I don't, I think it's, it's a very unfortunate and it's not us. And then, you know, people say, well, you're pro education, anti education. It's like, no, I'm just not trying to be pro or I'm just trying to try to find the best middle ground. And I don't know if you're ever going to find middle ground. Because yeah, it's, much, it's much more like a pair of hungry dogs trying to fight over the one bone, trying to figure out how to make both their stomachs full. You know, we yeah. just don't have enough money to go around. And, and this has been a problem forever and a half, but you go back 30 years and the percentage of the school that the state was paying was twice as high as it is now. And what do you do about that? Yeah. So, so Jeff, I, I all the representative, and you yell at them. <laughs> I, I just think it's difficult. I, I just, I, I, again, I don't, I don't, you know, any. It's not about if you support education or not support, because I, I don't, I don't say there's no one that doesn't support education, but. A vast majority, 90, 99% of us support education. It's just the affordability of education. So, and 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 I and and I don't think our administration or and I don't think that it's lost upon them. So, I I, I think they know. I, I but what do you what are you gonna do? I I mean, and and we do this every year and and. We just we just try and and I I actually heard some stuff. It, it it was funny because a couple of our town, a couple of towns to the north of us stop stop sending their eighth grade classes to Franklin Tech because they thought they were Franklin Tech was stealing kids. And it's like no, they just <laughs> the kids going to Franklin look at Franklin Tech want to go and see if they want to uh, to get involved with the trade. It's not you know they don't look at it as coaching students, but so we don't, I mean, our goal should be is to get every student the, the education that they need to move forward, you know, even if it's a trade or college or, or general, whatever the, the thing is, it, you know, I, I know kids that went to Franklin Tech that ended up going to GCC and then they went to UMass and now they're emergency room nurse down at uh, and and who would who would have thought that was possible but now they're you know now they're working emergency room nurse down at 
Bay State Medical, so I, I, I don't know. Education is a strange thing. So you, anything else in our budget there, Jeff, that you see? No, I think when, um, you know, once we, once we know free cash and we'll plug in the, the insurance numbers, um, okay. and then we'll, we'll have an updated form. Okay. You guys have a question, Crystal? Nathaniel? Nope, I've already asked them all. I'm good. Can you tell us that? Can I ask one question? Yeah. Oh, uh, Tommy had said it in the meeting last week, and, and I had some trouble. I was wondering if you could educate me. Um, you said that uh, our tax rate is low, but our tax bills are high. And that yes. came out again. Do you want me to pull that? Yeah. Could you clarify that? I can. Jeff, um, this was something that uh, FERCOG had put together um, to show tax rates versus the average tax bill. This is from the, I didn't have this, the FERCOG one right here, but this okay. is the um, one that the insurance companies were using. So, I mean, the, the short answer is that average property values in town are higher than other towns around us. And so if, if I have a two bedroom house and you have a two bedroom house and I'm in some of them and you're in Conway, the, the value of your same house as my versus my house is gonna be lower. So even if I'm paying a lower percentage of that, the actual tax bill for a two bedroom house in Conway versus in Sunderland would be the same. So we're paying 12.7%, I think it is. Conway's paying 14 bird something but our house might be worth 350 for the same house that's worth 275 in Conway. And so what, what we're saying is that those numbers end up equaling out where, yes, the, the, num the dollar per thousand that we're paying is lower, but we're paying it on more thousands for the same house. And so, you know, yes, it looks on paper like we have a low tax rate, but we also have, because of our, our proximity to UMass and UMass professors, and because of COVID and people fleeing right. New and, York City and our or Boston. properties were just reevaluated last year. Yep. And so all, all those things put together just means that a, a house here is going to be worth more than it is in Conway, which is great for you if you're trying to sell your house. <laughs> um, but, you know, in, in terms of actual money brought in, um, our tax, our percentage went down but we're still taking the same amount in from the same house that we were taking in before. That, that clear that up? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that helps. It came up in the uh, budget meeting again. I couldn't clarify it, so. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, it was, it, I thought it was kind of a, a um, an eye opener beca because I've, I've always looked at tax rate and they had they had a study and it was like when you looked at just Franklin County it somebody could have a twenty dollar tax rate but their bill was you know their average tax bill was less. I just thought it was it was and, and it was kind of and it was for in Franklin County was Sunderland Whiteley Deerfield Conway were kind of high, but it's it interesting because I, I thought it was interesting in the conversation because Deerfield, when they were talking about trying to exclude a sort certain portion of their town, you, you heard that right, and and they they, and I'm not quite who they appeal to, but they can get that section removed. From there, so their average goes down, so then it's put onto the other communities. I thought that was interesting. Oh, so that was where the Waitley and South Deerfield zip codes overlap. Yeah. Was that, yeah. the? that was so part. I, I, well, that was part of it, but there was two parts of that conversation. Yeah. So basically, they want to eliminate the people that live on Main Street and Old Deerfield. Just from there, when they look at the value for the e EQV. Yeah, it was the zip code overlap, something. New. Yeah, there's something that's up there also. So To clarify though, I, I don't think they're talking about excluding it entirely from the calculation for the whole pool. I think they're talking about excluding it from Deerfield and shifting it to Waitley. 
so that Deerfields would go down, Waitley's would go up, but Conway's and Sunderland's would stay the same. I believe that's what they were saying on that. Not, yeah. not that like that would affect us at all, but that Waitley's right. going to I, I think there's a section. Oh, okay. right. I, uh, I don't think I'd go to the town, Waitley town meeting and say that, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would either. Um, yeah, I, I just thought it... I, I just, and again, it was just like... It was like Okay, I, I just I didn't I guess I didn't understand that happening before. I don't know if you guys knew about it on the or had heard it. I, that's kind of like the first time I had heard it that said. It was like, wait a second. So so Deerfield was pursuing two tracks. One was to separate the Whiteley residents that were lived under a Deerfield zip code, let's say, and also there was the People that live in the north end of the town that that were associated with the nonprofit in that area. Yeah, and they want to eliminate those so that they don't have to. Yeah, I just thought yeah. that was interesting. Um, I I didn't realize that 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 would happen. I was I was very interested to hear, and they and they petitioned Jeffrey. Did you know that? I not until last week. So who do they petition to? I assume it's whoever does chapters. So then we should, should we petition because we have 10% affordable housing <laughs> for some reason? Exactly. Might have tried. But I'll find out who and see yeah. what we can write petition a for. Write a letter. See if we can reduce our taxes. Okay. So, so yeah. Right. So I, I guess that's what I was trying to, that's what I was trying to say. And, 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 and it's just something that the FERCOG had, had put out there of the 26, 27 towns in, in Franklin County. And it was it was it was an interesting number because um, Irving is like what seven dollars a thousand or something. I mean, but then again, they have the Northfield Mountains in Irving, and Rowe has the Bear Swamp. So whatever. Yeah, they. Yeah, but there's a really low. Like yeah, they're very low. They're but the I think like the average tax bill in Irving was what like seventeen hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or thirteen hundred dollars. It was, it was way low. It was like wow. I mean, staggering low. Okay. Anything else on the budget? Nope. Anything else, Keith? Uh, All right. Next, uh, we have a Riverside Park request. Yes. So the women's club would like to hold a tag sale behind uh, in Riverside Park the same day that the library is holding their book sale, which is May 20th. So I um, spoke with the recreation coordinator um, and informed the women's club that we know that T-ball is going to be using the baseball field in the morning. We don't know when baseball is going to... We won't know baseball schedule until... Uh, what is it, March, April, end of April, um, so, or maybe mid-April, um, but other, those were the only two concerns that were raised, um, and, you know, the idea was to, I think the, the women's club wasn't able to do fundraisers due to COVID for the last couple of years, and so thought, you know, this would be a nice thing to People could come to the book sale. They could go to the tag sale um, and sort of make a, a nice day of it. This would be like a, everyone put brings a big blanket and sets it up on the field kind of thing. Tables, but I think so. Yeah, they were talking about maybe a dozen vendors, and there there was some mention of maybe food and drink. And I said, make sure you talk to the board of health if you're doing that. Um, Do you know where they were planning on actually setting up. Um, I believe it would be to the between the outfield baseball outfield and the volleyball courts in that sort of area. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. But if there's now is recreation willing to work around that request if there's a baseball game or a T ball game or is recreation saying if we have a game scheduled we're not in favor of this? No, they're just saying be aware that let them know that there may be some parking. You know, parking may not be so as right. So that becomes a problem, right? Because I think at times that's where people are parked during baseball and t-ball games, aren't they, Tommy? Um, it it depends. It it, it really depends on 
on who it it used to be when there were two games or three games going out at the same time, but they don't have that same same right now. And and to tell you the and, and as I understand it, I if you know in advance that you're, there's a particular weekend that um and, 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 and I would think that the women's club would probably want games to be here because that draws more people to the thing. So yeah. Yeah. so I, I I wouldn't recommend that they change it. I just think they I would hope that they could work it out together. Now, what time of day is, is this that they're asking for? I didn't specify. I imagine it would be the same hours as the book sale. You mean what the, on the book, I didn't catch what the book sale was. Not off the top of my head. But usually with the tag sale stuff like that, you're usually here pretty early. Yeah, so yeah. Not. 8 a.m. to or early, possibly earlier than that even. Um, well, to start setting up and yeah, stuff like, like that. Yeah. Open doors usually sometime around 8. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. And given where they're... I don't, I don't see any reason why baseball can't still go on. Um, I mean, hey, I'd love to say that there's a kid in our team that could hit the ball and, and hurt somebody that far out <laughs> on the other side of the other side of the fence. But um, sounds like a good idea to me. Would, um, and this was just a thought that I had on parking, but baseball makes. It. Would we want to ask if they would do it in front of the town office building because then you could park on the street. It would be more convenient to park, add some parking. You wouldn't have to worry about the baseballs. You still have the people passing it on the way. I, I don't know if it's enough room, but. Yeah, and then does that interrupt the libraries, plant a book sale, people parking in the front of the town hall because it's easy to get your plants to, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Is this, a, is this a request that we're needing to vote on today? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think yeah, they, I we need they to, wanted, let they them. to start advertising yeah. and yeah. stuff like that, securing vendors. I, I think we've had much bigger things going on. Yeah. This, yeah. That didn't oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> yeah. concerned that everybody gets a parking space, right? That's all. Absolutely. All right, so there are no objections, and I'll tell them they can... So I shall uh, entertain a motion. I motion we accept the women's club um, request to use Riverside Park area for a tag sale on May 20th. Seconded. The motion made. Seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tree zero, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, capital stabilization override. Yes. So... Um, I updated the memo to include some of the major capital projects in each of the out years. Um, so I think that was the request. I don't know if you want to settle on a number yet or want to keep discussing. We have a pretty tight time frame in terms of getting this turned around and on the ballot, right? Yeah, I mean, it needs... Uh, by the end of March, yeah. we need to have decided so have to put it on. A little over two weeks to decide. Yeah, you can give us a number when uh, we have a better idea. Okay. Right, so make a recommendation. Okay. Our public request. Um, there, uh, I have not gotten an updated request from the schools, so that was a placeholder um, that we don't need to go over. I kind of had a conversation with Bill. Got some more information. Mm. Well, it, it, it because remember I I'd, I'd asked if the the money to dig the hole and everything was included. I guess it is, but, how, but I guess the engineering is not. Okay, I just thought that was I just thought that was interesting. So we're positive at this point then that the engineering is the only thing not included. That's what I had been told. Okay. But, but, Crystal. I know, but it's just, I would like an answer to that question. <laughs> okay. 
So that, that's a good answer to look for. What, what I was told is the only other thing that they an could anticipate would be um, soil, soil contaminated, contaminated soil. Right. No, so and that said, dirty dirt. Right. They right. said if you want us to drill test bores, we can do that um, to get an idea, but we still won't. We'll have to drill a lot because we'll have to see how far it went. And right. And and no, that piece I think we all knew. You know. No. Is an unknown at that point. I guess the not having the engineering costs on that was the surprise for us. Yeah. Yes, it was. So. Okay. Anything else from Marco? Not at the moment, no. Okie dokie. Select board updates. I got nothing this week. Daniel? Yeah, good. I don't have anything to bring up. Um, I think I got a South County Senior Center this week, right? I thought it was at the end of March. Is, it this Is that the end of March? Okay. Oh, the end of March. That's good. I got a tour of the, do I got a tour of the church coming up? The Congregational Church? Yes. I think that's Thursday. Wednesday morning? Thursday morning? It's one of those mornings. Yeah. I think it's the 16th. Yeah. That would be Thursday, right? Yeah. Yes. Sixteenth is Thursday. Yeah, it is the day okay. before Green. Bay so I, 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 I'm supposed to view the congregational church in Deerfield. Um, the, over the weekend was the thirty-first annual running of the Sunderland Youth Basketball Tournament. I guess amazed that it keeps going, um, and. You know, there's a team from Hatfield there and Hadley there and Sunderland, Deerfield, Whiteley, Conway, um, and the, the kids' faces change, but they all end up smiling and parents are grandparents and various stages of excitement. I remember I someone's those. father that used to be there quite a bit. He used to yell at the officials all the time. That's because he loved you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's so, how I grew up. You yeah. didn't get yelled but, at. <laughs> um, but, but I would like, um, you know, Jim Ewan does a very nice job in the Sun on Baseball. It was nice to see them and all their volunteers. And, 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 and a second to thank all of the um, over all of the um, businesses in town that that are always there and supportive of the kids. It's they'll it's greatly appreciated. So it was a good time. Town administrator updates. Uh, three quick things. A few weeks ago, when I was talking about the. Basketball hoops going up and down. I had said that the school had received a donation for part of the cost. It was actually from the facility use fees. It was not a donation. I just wanted to correct that. Last week. So was it the inside basketball hoops or the outside basketball hoops? My understanding is it was the inside. inside. So they haven't done it yet? Not yet, no. Huh? Not yet, no. And they haven't done the scoreboard yet? Oh, God, no. No, I was, I was there at the tournament and I was sitting there being like, a two or a three? I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, yeah, no, it's de definitely not been fixed yet, but I believe it's... So that so they're looking at replacing the scoreboard, Nathaniel? That, that was my understanding, yeah. Yep. Yes? Yep. Huh. It's, I, it's, it's, I think it's up to 20. Because it was the same one I was wondering, because the same one I've been used to, so... Yeah, and, and they haven't been able to replace light bulbs on it for quite a while, and so at this point, like, half of it is sometimes legible, and it's really kind of an embarrassment. Um, but not as bad as some places. Some some of the other places were worse. Yeah. And no matter where we are, I always end up managing to find a way to sit behind a basketball hoop, so I, I have to duck the entire time to see the score. <laughs> Boy, that's um, and if I could just take a second to um, also thank um, Mark Durso and Chris Ellis for um, their um, countless hours they've donated to the basketball tournaments and to coaching all the children and my, my son Ben in particular. So thank you to the... And not just them, but to, to all the, the parents and all of the volunteers that, that help make 
sports since I'm doing work. So thank you. No, it's it's an amazing it's an amazing thing to watch. You know, it's it's not easy to put on something like that. There's so many moving parts, and they really make they all make it look so easy. And I just I've always been amazed at how easy they make it look. But the the easier it looks, the more complicated it is. But people are doing a good job behind the scenes. So so that was one thing. Next uh, last. Week we had an elevator inspection. Oh no! Now, yeah. what do we got to do now? We have to replace the phone. Again? Again. It's been ten years. We looked at it. Okay. I, so I'm, how often was the phone used in ten years? I know. The good news is that even with the broken phone, it connects to dispatch, so somebody will show up. But they weren't able to actually talk. Um, how how is that possible? How does it? It's because the phone's not used. Unless, unless when you're bored, you sit in the elevator thing going up and down and calling people. You know, dispatch gets bored. You gotta <laughs> keep them on their toes. Uh, yeah, I don't. I that was a surprise. Um, and then we also, George looked at um, how to connect the generator to this building in the library, and he talked to an electrician. And the electrician said it's not powerful enough to run both buildings at the same time. At the same time, it's not powerful enough to run this building because of the elevator. Yeah. Um, and we would have to get a, probably going to get this wrong, transformer, something to change the output from the generator to what the building takes. Transformer. Okay. Um, so they said, yeah, you could have it so that it could run both buildings, but you'll get minimal use out of both um, and their recommendation was to buy separate generators for each building, especially if we wanted to try and run the elevator. Okay, so so the first, okay, so I guess I we knew that. So is the library set up so that it can, is it all set up with a transfer switch and everything that can be done? No, it does not have a transfer switch. Okay, so I would say that we need for to sure. know what it would cost to, to, to hook up the library with a transfer switch so that we can, right? Yep. And the same thing with the town town office building. Then once then that's once that's done, then what would it take? All right. So then if we have one generator that can do the the library, we're we're in a better position, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So then, so that it sounds like that generator is big enough to do that. Sounds right? like it. Yep. So let's get that done. Yep. Then we can look at what it would what we would need to run, what what the size of the size of the uh, generator would need to be for this building. Yep. No, absolutely. I just wanted to give okay. you an update. So let's, let's find out what it would cost to do that building in this building to get it set up to be able to accept the transformers. That makes sense. Yep. And then once we know that we can do that, let's get those set up. And then, and then if we can use that generator down there to run the library, more power to us. Yeah, literally. And 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 see that. <laughs> and and it's probably a good thing because of the the uh, geothermal that's used inside the library. So it'd, it'd be good to keep that building circulated. And that's the other thing we got to figure out is we we need to have somebody evaluate act the actual energy usage and determine if the generator can because that was. I guess the geothermal pumps require five horsepower. Oh, okay. I I, I know they're they're this, so I know they're five horsepower, right? So, I, 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 we I can geez, figure, yeah. huh? We can figure out how much. We, we can, can figure, figure out the load. I I mean we we can figure out the load because it's it's really not that much. Yeah. Okay. So are there any grants or any? And again, I'm just off the top of my head for setting up and maintaining heating and cooling centers for towns, you know, for public emergency, public whatever. There, so there are municipal vulnerability preparedness grants um, for, I, I don't think maintaining, but I think that, yeah, for like, we could probably apply for a transfer switch or a generator. Um, 
I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking yep. if you're going to be, again, evaluate it, see what you, what your expenses are going to be, yep. and if, if the generator isn't going to service the need yep. for one building or the other, is there something out there that, yeah, that could work for that? I mean, I, I know it's a long shot, but. Yeah. I, I think transfer switching are not that. I thought we had a transfer switch for a year. Yeah, no, it's not so much the transfer switch. It's that if the generator isn't going to suffice yeah. for this building and. Well, we would, we'd find, we, I think we would find a generator. I, I, I. Again, I I know that the other I'm pretty sure the other generator would handle over there, and and I I've always it's always been a concern because we didn't put glycol in the geothermal because it so it was always what would happen if you lost power extended power loss in the library and it was cold cold would it freeze up so it'd be it'd be nice to get that with a transfer switch so that we could pull down a generator and hook up. At the minimum, yeah. you know, I'm not so much concerned with this building, mm -hmm. except for the fact that it'd be nice to have another building that is set up so that if we do have extended power outage, that we would have, or, you know, could be cool or hot, right. that we'd have cooling center. Because it's easier, it's, it's easier to get people in here to cool now that we, especially now that we have the, because uh, that changes everything also with the uh, the mini splits, because now we have a, for cooling, right? If you've got electricity. Right. So, but if you have a generator, you would have right. cool, and we can get the place with our shade and stuff. We in the construction, it stayed pretty cool too, mm -hmm. yeah. and we have room. Yeah, and I'm just you know we we have that senior center there now or that senior living so close 120 main street mm -hmm. so close that if yeah if there ever was an extended power outage and they weren't able to and they have a generator too. yeah they're pretty big ones. yeah i'm sure they do but yeah it's a good yeah you get to the point where you can run out of gas or propane or whatever your generator's being mm -hmm. no, fueled yeah. with also i i agree i i think we should I, it was something that seemed to just stop. I, I remember we were pretty on a track to get it done, and I was, just yep. want to get back on the track. Absolutely. Anything else? Nope. That's all I got. All right. Motion. I motion we adjourn. Okay. Seconded. We got motion made, seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We are out at uh, eight ten. Jeffrey.